One of the earliest hatching sedges of the year is the, the Granum. Uh, some rivers have an absolutely phenomenal hatch of them, uh, including my, my home river, the, the River Tyvee in uh, West Wales, which is quite a, a famous river for the Granum hatch. Um, it's yeah, it can literally appear in clouds, and it is a very early hatching sedge. Uh, actually, both in terms of the time of the season, but also time time of the day. Uh, it's it, it can be very much a, an early hatching sedge. Um, but because it's one of the earliest hatching uh, in you know insects, not just sedges, uh, one of the earliest hatching uh, insects in general. It is one of um, yeah one of the most important hatches of the year just because it gets the the fish moving and gives them a, f a, f a form of sustenance early in the season as well uh, so definitely one you need to uh, have in your have in your armory uh, you don't want to be caught off guard it's a reasonably small sedge you're probably talking of 14 uh probably 16 would be more accurate in in, in fairness um but when you do study the adults, you will find they do appear in in different sizes, as with most insect, insects in, in, in general. Um, but yeah, 14 or a 16 uh, does cover it well. In the vice here, I've got the Partridge SLD. Um, you can use, again, the SLD2 if you wanted to. I find the SLD just fine. I'm just going to use a, an olive thread. Uh, nothing fancy, just 14 ovivus olive thread. So I'm just going to catch that in. You can use olive, brown, whatever thread you really fancy. Uh, there's, it's not going to appear that much through the dressing anyway, just in the head. For the body, we're going to use uh, pheasant tail. So just a standard pheasant tail. It's got a browny, mottled uh, sedge. Is the uh, is the granum? So uh, the pheasant tail usually represents represents it very well you can if you wanted to add a um a fluorescent butt section down here so you can add like a fluorescent green or something uh for the egg sack and so forth uh if I'm honest i don't tend to bother i don't think it actually brings that much to the to the fly so to secure that down and then take the the pheasant tail in touching turns i've actually only picked out three uh pheasant tail fibers to form this body you don't need more than that take it down don't, don't go too close to the eye we've got a fair bit going on in that thorax section which you'll soon find out so don't overcrowd leave a good couple of mil spare what we do in terms of the rib, just utilise the, the tying thread, take it down and then just take it up in loose turns and that just acts as a, as a, as a securing rib more than anything just against the, the teeth of the fish. So the thorax, um, I'm going to use some, uh, you're probably bored of hearing this, fox squirrel, I do love my fox squirrel, uh, it's just such a great leggy material. Uh, natural leggy material so it's going to use a bit of that in the thorax you're going to apply a bit in front and behind the wing so got enough there it's going to loosely dub you can touch dub at this stage if you wanted to I'm just going to just loosely dub this onto the onto the thread not too much just enough to be suggestive of the of the legs and again we have a fair bit going on in this section so you don't want to overcrowd that's perfect just take those turns that's perfect just stroke all of that back like so so the wing you got a two-part wing first one is a natural CDC feather I've just got a natural grey you could use brown and stuff if you wanted to but I'm just going to use uh, just a natural grey get the curvature of the feather you want the curvature on this one actually pointing down rather than up 
So you want this sloping over the body and take it just beyond the body. I'd probably say two or three mil beyond, sorry, the, the length of the hook. So just about two, three mil beyond the length of the hook. Trap that in, pinch and loop, a couple of securing turns. It's looking good. Snip off the excess. And then for the second wing, this is quite a strange feather. Uh, it's not something that automatically comes on somebody's radar. It's a Woodcock CDC. Now, good old Steve Cooper at Cooksale, uh, if I'm honest, before he told me about all this, I didn't realise that uh, Woodcock actually had a uh, CDC, but yes, they do. Uh, there's only a few feathers on on each bird. Uh, last time I checked with Steve he did have some of these feathers. But if you see them it's got a natural mottling, just that natural brown mottling running through the feather which is just perfect for these sedge patterns, absolutely perfect. So it's picking out one feather and that is sloping back over the fly and oh you can see that it just and if you see a granum honestly that is so accurate a representation for the uh, for the granum. So just to have a natural material that does that is is fantastic. And you obviously have the buoyancy from that CDC aspect. So lean it back over using that natural curvature again. Align it with the first CDC. When you're happy, go back, pinch and loop, and secure it. That's great. Snip off the butt. If you're using, um, you know, if you're making these in bigger sizes, again for the granum you don't need to. But if you're making different sedges, uh, you could obviously use a couple of, you know, the normal CDC underneath before bringing the woodcock CDC over. Now, I just want a bit more bugginess in this. Uh, head section before finishing off so I've got more fox squirrel which I prepared earlier and that's going to just come up to this thorax uh, sorry to this head section before finishing off and it's quite a naturally fussy yeah a, a, a sedge is a fussy uh, fussy fly on the water surface so you don't want anything to be too neat in fairness uh, so that's that's perfect there that's enough dubbing and then just secure it off so that's the end of the flight that's just a great imitation for, for, for the granum. What you can do at this stage is just pick out a few of these uh, fox squirrel fibers just to make it even buggier in that thorax section. Just like that. And you still want, you don't want this fly kind of sitting awkwardly. So I, I still clip a bit underneath, not too much with the sedges, just a bit, just to tidy it up so that it still sits as it should. But that's the end of the fly. Just a great, great imitation for, for, for granum. So if you have granum on your river, or just a, a small sedge in general, that's definitely one to, to tie up. Again, just couple of different uh, ingredients, not many, uh, just the odd one with the, the Woodcock CDC, but worth, uh, worth a try and uh, worth tying up a few. Hope it brings you luck. Tight lines.